The power of habit is that it will help you last long. Whatever you are doing now is a seed you are sowing for the future. Prayer is one of the tools that God has given us to be intimate with Him. Tell your neighbor, I hate so far. I hate so far. It's not my fault. I hate so far. Today, even as we begin to come to the end of the month, I want to teach on knowing or identifying the voice of God. How to know or identify the voice of God. Amen. How to know the voice of God. Amen. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Amen. You know, if I, if I, if I asked you to close your eyes and I told you and i didn't even maybe some of you i didn't even need to tell you but i just began to speak with your eyes closed you will know who is preaching amen you've not seen me maybe they even blindfolded you and brought you to church but as i keep speaking you will know that's pastor area some of you will be able to tell straight up no that's pastor gibson you will know that's pastor phoebe Amen. You know your friend's voice. Hallelujah. In Genesis 3 verse 8, which we have looked at several in this month, the Bible says, and they heard the voice of God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Amen. And they what? Heard the voice of God. Praise the Lord. And they did what? Can we read together, please? Genesis 3, verse 8. 1, 2, 3, go. God bless you. They heard the voice of God. Go to verse 7. The eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed thick leaves together and made themselves aprons. Praise the Lord. And then afterwards, they heard the voice of God. Is it that God was not speaking since? Why does it seem like in the life of some people, it is only after things have gone wrong, or when they have done the wrong thing, that it seems like they come to their senses? Why does it seem like It is after the act has been done, the mistake made, the sin committed, that the person suddenly seems to remember God's voice. I want you to pay attention. It is now they heard the voice of God. It is, and God spoke. All this while, God was speaking. Tell me, God is speaking. God is speaking. But why is it that for many people, it seems as though they reach a point where the voice of God is faint. It's as though God is no longer speaking, but God was speaking. Hallelujah. God what? It's so important that we shed a bit of light on this one. Go to verse, from verse 1. From verse 1. Just because of time. From verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And the serpent said unto the woman, Yea, has God said, he shall, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Has God said it? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Praise the Lord. Tell me there was a word. There was a word. The reason why it seems as though in the moment of the temptation they were not hearing God's voice was because there was already God's voice. The reason why it seems as these people, and that's why I want to teach you this, how to spot and identify God's voice. Some people are looking for something else, something dramatic, something from somewhere else to stop them or to save them in the midst of their problems. But actually, there is already the voice of God. 
So what they needed to do was to pay attention to this voice. Hello, somebody. So what we saw the serpent do was he came to question the voice they were already used to. Hello? Hello? Has it, has it ever happened to you where, you know, someone asks you something? Just like, you know, I could be speaking right now. And like I said, your eyes are closed. You're blindfolded and all that. And then you come to church and they ask you, who is that? You say, Pastor Area. And then the person looks at you and says, your eyes are still short. Are you sure that is Pastor Area? Well, um, it sounds like Pastor Area. You see, doubt already. You begin already to doubt because someone is questioning the voice you are used to, the voice you know, the word you already are familiar with. So, it is not because God was not speaking. God had been speaking all these times and his word distinct and clear. And they were walking and carrying that voice until something, somebody came and questioned the voice that they were used to. And in that moment, that's when everything got spoiled. In verse 7 again, show me verse 7 again. And the eyes of them both, after they, they had committed the sin, they became exposed. Verse 8. And then now, it seems as if they heard the voice anew. But no, the voice was always there. Praise the Lord. The voice was always there. So me, the voice of God has always been there in my life since I was a little child. Hebrews 1 from verse 1. This is why now I want to show you how to know the voice. Because some people are looking for a special voice. No. Amen. Hello, somebody. No. It's clear. There's no mystery about it. Look at what the Bible says in Hebrews 1 from verse 1. It said, God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. Amen. God, who many times over, many times in the past, spoke in different kinds of ways. God spoke in different ways. There are different ways God is trying to speak to you. Since you were a little child, there are different ways God has been communicating. That's why even in one point, Paul is writing to the church and he tells them, he says, he says, if a person who does not have the law begins to do the things of the law, he said that person has fulfilled the works of the works of the law required of the law, even though he does not have the law with him, because the voice of God is everywhere in nature. Hallelujah. So before they heard God's voice walking in the garden, God was already speaking. God, oh, at sundry times. Let me see what um, another translation has to say. Show me Amplify, for example, and then you show me a message. He said, God, having spoken to the fathers long ago in the voices and writings of the prophets in many separate revelations. Tell me separate revelations. Each of which set forth a portion of the truth and in many ways. Can you see that? Tell me God speaks in many ways. Oh, yeah. He says, going through in message, a long line of prophets. God has been addressing our ancestors in different ways for centuries. So it is not exactly true, you know, because some of you, wonder, you know, you, you want God to speak to you in one way. For example, you know, no, God speaks in different ways. God speaks in different ways. Hallelujah. God speaks in different ways. Amen. Many ways. God. Oh, at sundry times and in diverse manners. Tell me, God speaks in diverse manners. He speaks in diverse manners. But there's something that is common to every way which he speaks. Those are some of the characters we're going to be looking at today. How do I spot God's voice when he's speaking? How do I know it? How do I know this is God and that this is not the devil? How do I know? He spoke in many ways to the fathers. He will speak in the same way to me. Hallelujah. In, in Matthew, the seventh chapter. Let's look at Matthew, the seventh chapter from the 15th verse. Matthew 7 from verse 15. You know, he says, beware of false prophets. Hallelujah. 
Beware of what? Beware of false prophets. Beware of false voices. The Bible speaks of many voices that have gone onto the world. Beware of the false. Beware of the fakes. Beware of voices that look like they mean you well, but that don't. Beware. Which come to you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly, they are what? Ravening wolves. This is another dimension. But let me focus on the voice, on the voice, the voice dimension. Go to 16. Go back up. Let's, let me say something there. Look at your neighbor, preach to them. Say, beware of false prophets who come in sheep's clothing. Hallelujah. If you look at this verse, a person who is not very mature in the things of the Spirit of God will think that God is speaking about uh, preachers. He's not speaking about preachers. He's speaking about fellow ordinary members who claim to be prophetic. We know because he says they are sheep. They are in sheep's clothing. They are not shepherds. They are what? It is a beware of false prophets which come to you as fake shepherds which he spoke of earlier, and which he probably will speak again about as we read on. But here he's speaking about those who speak to you, people who come to talk to you, who also you look at them and they are like sheep. They are people like you who say they understand. They feel. He said, but they are actually ravening wolves inside. They will look normal. They will look everything. They will look like you, so it's easy for you to trust them because we are all sheep. So they come into your fold. All of you are sheep. All of them have the same shepherd, the same pastor. You say, beware of false sheep. Hallelujah. Beware. Verse 16. Ye shall know them by their fruits. How do I spot an how do I spot a fake? How do I spot a voice that is not of God or that is not from God? He said, You are going to look at them and know them by their fruit. Tell me the fruit. The fruit. Children are moved by their feelings. How that cold sheep made you feel. Not knowing that this cold sheep is actually a wolf trying to lead you somewhere, lead you into trouble. But there is another one that he says, by their fruit you shall know them. By their fruit. Amen. He says, inside there are wolves. When they put in front of you, they put in front of all of you. Pasture. He never eats pasture. Amen. He never eats pasture. You never see him eating when others are eating. Why? Because he is not a sheep inside. Sheep eat pasture. But wolves are cannibals. There's something else they eat. So he cannot be eating meat. In public, he would eat it in private. So you never see him manifesting the fruit of a sheep. But a lot of children are not spot on to observe. We're very quick to excuse. Your excuse is action. 
You excuse our actions. Oh, it's just a weakness. Amen. It's just a weakness. That's how easy we change. No, he's telling you. He's showing you who he is. He says, you know them by their fruit. Hallelujah. By their fruit. You shall know them by their fruit. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? He says, no. Show me 17. Even so, every good tree brings forth what? Good fruit. But a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. Hallelujah. Watch out. Watch out. If he is bringing out evil fruit, it's a show of something that's inside of him. Hallelujah. Hello. Praise God. Praise the Lord. So me, I shall know them. I shall know him. I shall know her by their fruit. I shall know the voice by its fruit. Amen. Now, 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 now this, is so, this is so dangerous and very important. If we, if we are spot on, if we are prudent people, when you, you have to know that if fruits are showing, huh? if fruits are showing, that's to show you how serious the situation is because there is a tree behind that fruit. I'm asking you to know somebody. So, and, and sometimes we see people who are trying to deal with the fruit. No, there is a tree. And sometimes you don't know how big that tree is. There is a tree behind that fruit. So, I watch out for the fruit so that I can know what kind of tree it is. That's what he's speaking about here. Every good tree brings forth good fruit. But every corrupt tree will bring forth evil fruit. Go to verse 18. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. This is, this is what God is saying. This is Jesus Christ speaking. So me, I'm a good tree. Amen. Say, I'm a good tree. I only bring forth good fruit. I get attracted to good fruit. I get attracted to good trees. I have a turn off against bad trees against bad fruit i'm not attracted to the wrong kind of fruit amen he says there is a certain fruit at the middle of the garden you are not supposed to eat but the bible says the woman saw it and she liked it they desired it that's not who you are amen praise god so me i'm susceptible i'm vulnerable only to good trees. Amen. Only to good trees. 19. Every tree that brings forth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Hallelujah. So there is hope for the person who has a tree that is not good to deal with. Praise the Lord. There's hope. So, why am I saying this? Because at, at the end of today, we are going to look at some of these characters that you are supposed to watch out for to know if this voice I am hearing or listening to is of the Lord. Because if you really can just really analyze the voice you are listening to, you will know whether this is a good, good tree or not. And certain things, certain voices you can tell of, no, I don't listen to such things, I don't listen to such things, I don't listen to such things. That ain't the voice of God. I don't listen. I don't do. I don't, I don't buy such things. I, in fact, I hate certain voices. Praise the Lord. Take one more verse before we look at it. One more uh, verse, rather. Psalms 23. From verse 1. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, okay, can you show me John 10? Show me John 10 firstly. So that I would. John 10 from verse 3. But then we'll come back to Psalm 23. John 10 from verse 3. He says, To him, the potter, openeth and the sheep what hear his voice and he calleth his own sheep by name and leads them out praise the lord to the good to the correct shepherd he says the potter will open the door which is the lord 
and the sheep we hear his voice so um it is supposed to be natural for us to hear god's voice as god's children created in his image and likeness so me i love the voice of god i hear his voice i'm tuned to his voice now he says and I, I don't know if you have any knowledge about um, animal husbandry, especially when it comes to herds, like the case of a sheep. But I'll be trying to shed some light today with scriptures. Now, the sheep, immediately they hear the voice of the shepherd that they are familiar with. They're excited. Amen. They may not see him yet, but immediately he enters into, let's say, the barn, for example. He calls out unto his own by name and he leads them out. So I want you to watch, watch, watch out how God leads people. Because in Romans, the 8th chapter, the 14th verse, we know that scripture very well and we'll quote it. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. How does God lead people? God leads us by his voice. Amen. God does what? God leads us by his voice. Obviously, like you know very well by now, I think you should know it. You're a Christian and you've been around for some time. You, if you, I mean, you've been coming to church every day looking for God. If you've, I'm sure you've not seen him physically. Amen. Praise the Lord. By now you should know that. Man. I think those Pastor Emmanuel was teaching the other day here. You know, I loved, I loved, I loved how God, God was able to help him to really throw light or at least mention. The, the incidences of the aunt. Oh, I'd never, I'd never forget that. I'd never forget that. When in Proverbs 6, verse 6, the Bible says, go to the ants and learn. Say, go to the ants and learn. I literally, I literally went to the ant to go and learn. One day, I, you know, I was watching just um, wildlife and watching what, how, what the ant does. Do you know? Do you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, 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 it's amazing. May God help us to be tuned to his frequency. Do you know when a mother ant gives birth? A mother ant, of course, obviously, you probably know the story. They go on their nuptial flight. Mother ant and father ant, they decide to start a colony, a colony, for example. And let's say the queen, an ant or a termite, as the case may be, and, and any of those in that colony, they decide to, you know, um, she gets pregnant, for example, and she begins to just lay and to give birth. Ah, God, may we not miss your voice. She, she just lays. She starts her first generation. If you come after a few weeks or months, you can see several millions, or years, you can see several millions of ants coming from one mother ant and one father ant. And guess what happens? Many of them never see their parents all their life. Never. From the moment where they are born, you know, especially after the first generation, you have the nursing aunts that takes care of the new ones. Every newborn, they carry them into the nursing home where they put them. Far from their mother. From there, that is where they begin to, to set them into categories. You have the ones that become soldier aunts. You have the ones that become this. You have the ones that become that. And guess what? Not you know what the Bible says? It says they have, they have no ruler or guide, and yet they know what to do in every season. How does the mother, who is somewhere in her own um, presidential villa, communicate to over three million ants, and everybody stays in line? Amen. As I tell folks, we don't need to see God to stay in touch with God. We don't need to see God. If the ant, he said, go to the ant and learn. Have no ruler. They plan and prepare. They are structured and organized. Praise the Lord. Help me preach to somebody closer. So you say, see, there's no excuse. To misbehave. 
when I was a little child. It's something my mom always used to tell us. Every time someone would lose their parent, for example, or anything, my mom would sit us down and not forget. She called every one of us. So you see them. So those children now have lost their mother. They've lost their father in some cases. She'd say, if I'm not here today, if for any reason I'm not around, learn to talk to yourself. I've seen some people who come up with different reasons and excuses to excuse themselves and the way and how they act. Amen. So God is a way. Let's assume God is a way. Adam and Eve are by themselves. They have a word, an instruction, a coding, a chemical, you may say. That you are supposed to respond to. You are given a template what to do and how to do. See, they are supposed to know the voice to follow. It's very important. As many as are led by the Spirit. You don't see the Spirit. I don't need to see the Spirit. There's something in I'm a spirit being, so I want to connect. I want to connect. Ah, yeah. This thing. Amen. You see, a, there's what we call the scout ant. A scout ant can go out very far looking for food. When he finds food, he comes, he's finding its way back home to come call the entire squad. Then they go with the team. So, me again. There is no reason. There is no excuse for me to misbehave. There is a voice that keeps me in line. Keeps me in line. You see, he calls his own by name and leads them out. How does God lead? By the voice. By the voice. Verse 4. And when he puts forth his own sheep, he goes before them. He does what? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So me, God goes before me. So, 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 so you see now that this is very important if you understand how the shepherds, some of you who come from, you know, countries where they have headsmen, you probably understand this. Sometimes you can have some of them behind or you can have them in front. But you can see a man can be going just somewhere and just his voice, the entire fold are following him. Something he has trained them to become used to. Could just be a sound. And you see, the, the, all of them following it. They're just following. They're following. They're just following the sound. The sound. The sound. You can come and try to do the same. They don't follow you. You're doing the same thing. And this is important for me because he says he goes before them. And so that child of God who, you know, you are, you are in a certain situation or something is happening to you. And you think that God has left you. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't have an understanding. You don't understand how, what it means to be. If you are a sheep, God cannot leave you. He goes before you. So that thing that you are going into, he has already gone there. That's why you are going there. I'll prove it to you. We'll come to Psalms now. Hallelujah. He said, and the sheep follow him. So the sheep is following. They follow his voice. They follow his voice. They follow his voice. Like the ants. They know that mom is giving birth. Mom is still giving birth to more. Mom is giving birth to more kids. Soon I'm going to have more siblings. And we're going to need more food in this house. So what do they do? They send scout ants. Several of them, they scatter across different parts of, 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 of say, the forest, for example. Looking for food. And when they find, they bring. And you know the discipline, the, the, the scout ants, they don't eat the food. They don't eat the food. 
They don't eat the food. They bring the food home. In, you, you have to take it to storage places. The food gets stored. It doesn't matter. They don't say, oh, I've caught my portion and then disappear. No. Ants that are well trained. Ants with home training. It's amazing that several political figures and political leaders don't have what this common sense that ants have. They go, the carriage, you see all of them, they come sometimes, carry everything together as a team. Something bigger than them, they can move it, move it in, store it. Go again, looking for. It is a portion they give you as food that you eat. They give you a portion you eat. My God. Um, I don't know if you're getting me. The third question is, how did they know this? Tell me the voice. The voice. Mama aunt is speaking. The queen, she's speaking. And all their life, they can live their whole life never ever seeing the queen. Even their mother, they never saw him because their eyes were still very close when they took them, separated them from their mother. They woke up started work all their life but they're working for the kingdom the sheep follow him so may i follow the voice of god so may i follow the voice of god i follow the voice of god because i know his voice verse five because of time verse five and a stranger will they not follow you see that they will not what they will not follow a stranger I want you to pay very close attention to what the Bible is saying. It says, a stranger they will what? But will flee from him. For they know not the voice of strangers. I want you to pay very close attention. Don't rush this one. It doesn't say the voice of a stranger they will not hear. It says they will not follow him. Because there are many voices gone out. So strangers will still speak. But it's, it is, it's off. Amen. Hello somebody. Jesus himself heard the voice of the devil. Jesus himself was also tempted. But there's something. That's not the voice I hear. Amen. That's not what? It's not the voice I listen to. It's not the voice I listen to. The voice of a stranger, they know not. They will not follow his voice. Even though he also makes the same sound. Amen. What is that? Amen. This one is fake. This one is fake. They will flee from him. Because of time. Show me Psalms 23 from verse 1. Psalms 23 from verse 1. Now he says, the Lord is my shepherd. You see that now? <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord is what? You see this? The Lord is my shepherd. What does that mean? If the Lord is my shepherd, who am I? You see that? The Lord is my shepherd, and I am a sheep. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd, and what? It doesn't matter how many times you pray this prayer, or repeat these, these psalms, and sing it, and know it from childhood. If you are not a sheep, it won't work. The Lord is my shepherd. If you are a wolf, eh, eh, it does not shepherd wolves. The Lord is my shepherd, and I am a sheep. Therefore, I shall not want. The reason I will not want is because I am a good sheep. Praise the Lord. I am a good sheep. And because I know the following facts. Verse 2. He makes me. So he makes me. He makes me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He makes me. He makes me to lie down. In green pastures. He leads me. Beside what? So the reason we had to go to John first. Was because I wanted to show you how he leads. How does God lead me to still waters? Do you want still waters in your life? Or do you have still waters currently? If your water is still, stagnant, poisonous. And the type that you cannot drink from. It's because, it's most likely because you are not being led. He leads me 
beside still waters by his voice, by speaking to me. Hallelujah. He leads me. Thank you.